going to start off by showing three photos that all are within the same setting. And after I show the three photos, I'm going to ask for some audience participation in um, some responses in what you think you're seeing here. So here's the first photo. This is the second. And this is the third. And like I said, they all take place within the same setting. So does anybody have any ideas of what they think they're seeing within these photos? Go ahead, shout out some answers. School? Community center? Tidy areas. Tidy areas. Housing complex? Counseling center? All right, so I heard a bunch of responses that all said things along the line. If a community center, a place for growth, learning, um, engagement with others, maybe rejuvenation, relaxation, and enjoyment. Perhaps unsurprisingly, I didn't hear any guesses of this being a mental health institution. This isn't incredibly surprising, given that I'm giving, giving this talk to a predominantly American audience. Because in America, we tend to distinguish mental health care from anything resembling rejuvenation or enjoyment or fun. In fact, I experience this phenomenon on a very micro level quite regularly when I tell people that I'm a clinical social worker. Usually people's responses are something along the lines of exasperated or pitying responses. And those responses become even more startled when I tell them that I find this work enjoyable and energizing and yes, even fun. Just like it's hard to envision the, that these photos could be of a mental health institution, I found that it's hard for us to conceptualize mental health care different than what we have come to normalize in this country. These photos were in fact of a, um, a mental, the public psychiatric care center in a town called Giel, Belgium. Here are some photos from my trip to Giel, just to give you a visual representation of what the town is like. With a rich 750 year history, dating back to the sixth century legend of St. Dymphna, Giel has what's called a deinstitutionalized mental health care system, in which people throughout Belgium who are experiencing mental illness can be placed with a foster host family who takes them in and cares for them like a new member of their family. The approach in Giel is one of depathologizing mental illness. And this approach to depathology is seen even in the root level of, of the term that is referred to people with mental illness. Not calling them patients, but rather borders or guests is a way that humanizes people with mental illness in Giel. These families that take in borders usually come from long lineages and many generations of families that have taken in borders. And their approach is not to cure these symptoms or get rid of them, but rather to accept and welcome borders as they are. Care, not cure, is the motto that this psychiatric care center utilizes, seeing these unique mental differences as benefits rather than burdens. This level of understanding of, of mental illness is something that I was taught in my Master of Social Work degree. That there's actually some beneficial value to that with which we pathologize in mental illness. Anxiety, for example, has been evolutionarily useful at keeping us all safe from dangerous situations. It's what, it's what alerts each of us to slam on our brakes when we think we're about to hit the car in front of us. And in the past year, I have completed my social work field placement at the Women's Center of Southeastern Michigan, employing this same tactic of finding the beneficial value in mental illness within the 10 clients that I got to counsel. I help them on a range of presenting issues, from expanding their social support networks, to looking for a job, to rebuilding confidence and self-esteem after toxic relationships. And universally what I found is that showing people that there's some beneficial value to this thing that's pathologized in the rest of society has tangible healing benefits to it. Um, so I wanna point to some contrast between what I experienced in my time here at the Women's Center and what I found in Giel. 
I applaud the Women's Center and really commend the work that it does as a center in depathologizing mental health care. But upon my arrival back to the US from Yale, I've been disappointed and saddened to think about my clients here only receiving one hour of therapeutic care in which they felt embraced and accepted fully as they are in comparison to the entire lifetime of community, social, and family support that Borders and Yale receive. That's one hour compared to a life, one hour a week compared to a lifetime of support, which is a really stark difference. Another big difference is in the shame that I felt that my clients feel in asking for help, in seeking therapy, and even coming to the Women's Center, which I think of as a very welcoming and inviting space. Especially when I compared this to the community protection that borders experience in Giel. I, I got to observe this firsthand during a European festival that was taking place in Giel during my visit. This is a picture of the, of the festival. This festival brought in uh, vendors from a variety of European countries to sell their goods and food to people in the town. While there, one of the vendors was making fun of how a boarder walked because he walked differently than how people normally do. And people in the community who weren't, who weren't part of this boarder's family and didn't know him very well approached the vendor and asked him why he was making fun of someone, especially since this boarder wasn't doing anything to harm him. And I think about this in contrast to the shame that my clients feel here versus this community protection that this boarder experienced. It wasn't something that he had to take on alone. It was something that he felt embraced by and didn't even have to um, approach himself, but rather was taken care of. Another stark contrast between what I've experienced in regards to mental health care here and in Giel is in the noticeable and observable affect and mood in the population. The community in Giel is integrated with borders and community members living side by side. And visitors to the town frequently comment on the happiness and contentment that you can see within the population. This sits in stark contrast to the high levels of life dissatisfaction and nearly 70% rate of disengagement with work evident in American culture. So at this point, you must be wondering, why don't we bring a model like Yield to the US? And actually, that's been tried several times before. Nearly 50 years ago, an American woman named Ellen Baxter traveled to Giel to learn more about this model of care. Her story was personal, looking for an alternative to the lack of care that her mother received in this, in this country and which her mother could have benefited from as she was suffering from mental illness. Baxter proposed instituting a, mo a model of family foster care in the US in her grad school applications and she was rejected by every school. All with everyone claiming that this proposal was not gonna be viable in the US. A psychologist at Harvard told her that there wouldn't be enough families here that would host borders. A sociologist at UCSD said that the very notion of accepting mental illness goes against the American ideal of wanting to fix things that are broken. But Baxter didn't let this stifle her. Instead, she rejected those rejections and created a co-housing community in New York City where people with mental illness live side by side, New York City residents, and there's a noticeable impacts in the reduction of symptom severity in, in those living there. Many of you may know the one in four statistic, that 25% of people will have a mental illness at some point in their life. But as a social worker, I've been trained to be critical of us versus them, or helper versus helped language. While we may not all meet the criteria for a mental health diagnosis, I believe that everyone in this auditorium has at some point experienced a situation in, when they, in which they felt excluded due to something that made them different, or due to something that was different about them. As a social worker, I don't believe that we can change the culture without acts of subversion or going against the grain. 
And I think part of doing that is in digging into that part of ourselves that knows what exclusion is like. And in being the, a member of the community in which we wish we had had in those situations. I've been inspired by Mary Pfeiffer's quote on cultural change because she calls for subversion or going against the grain in creating this change. She says, social change is a million acts of kindness, but cultural change is a million subversive acts of resistance. S cultural change is built in small moments and is built incrementally. It is built over time. It is built every time we have the courage to approach a vendor who is making fun of how someone in our community is walking. It is built every time we pause and let someone finish speaking when we want to interject and, and share our own thoughts. It is built every time we stop and have a conversation with someone that we would normally avoid eye contact with on the street. And when these small moments are built up over time and are done at a constant critical mass, they become the norm rather than the exception. They create cultural change. They create a culture like Giel. And like Ellen Baxter, they show that a, that a culture that is accepting of difference does not need to be at odds with American values, but can be part of this country's value system when we have the courage to practice acting subversively. Thank you. Woo!